The industry was very, very new, very small, um, and, and it was a way of promoting wines. There was a need to create a profile to have our wines known. It's one thing to know you're making good wines, but you need to let other people know. Wine shows are part of the way of doing it. There was a very active Wine Growers Association, so the people from there and from the Ag Society worked together and had a subcommittee to do that. With three from them, three from us and a secretary. It worked so well because everyone was focused. It was a good team. It's always been a West Australian show. It's not a local show, it's a West Australian show with, with entries from throughout the uh, state. And that's been an important factor in its success because people see it as a worthwhile event because the judges have been good, the integrity is there, and that means a lot. We had the big investment wineries in Margaret River, um, but here, over here, we had struggling farmers trying to do something different. But at the wine show, it was a leveller. Like, you know, we had good wine, you know, all wines all being juice. judged at the same level. There's always a community spirit in the country. You didn't do things to be paid. It was part of the community. Anne and I were both involved with the tennis club. Mm. They were looking for someone to wash the glasses and it was a big fundraiser for us to each year. We'd do all the washing and that of the wine glasses. So it was a very big thing for our club. But we had about six people going every day doing different shifts, washing the glasses. And you were not supposed to wear perfume or deodorant or anything like that because the, uh, the smell might affect the, the glasses. It kind of brings back a few memories. You don't realise how much was involved in all the preparation and the background stuff. So um, I think it's just nice to have someone that knows all that. There's so much that's changed, I guess. It's good to know where the roots came from. I think it's really important that we don't sort of look at it and go, oh, you know, there's a big winery there, there's a big winery there, there's great big vineyards, there's all this sort of stuff happening. But in actual fact, at one point, and not that long ago, it yeah. was there's lots this. of small patches, there's little vineyards and people with passion and desire to, to create something that, um, that, that, that they could see in the, in the future. Mm. The Agricultural Department had, had an experimental block out at Forest Hill and it was doing quite well and it was suggested by, I think it was Ernie Mead, to Tony that we might like to plant some vines too. He was interested so we put in a small amount, a couple of acres I think it was, at the farm in, it would have been um, 60, 68 I think. In the early days of course it was using secateurs and picking into banana boxes. From there, it was, well the whole thing expanded you know, with, with the extra, extra vineyards and then you had machinery. It's just been wonderful to be part of it, to see our dad create something from really nothing. And his encourage vision, other people. yeah, his vision that this people. is possible, and and helping other wineries see that vision. The wonderful thing is to have seen something that started off as a tiny little part of the show develop and become a very important part of this region. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Both retired now, so yeah, mm -hmm. and things change. It's nice to look back. <laughs>